This is my Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra factory unlock 512 gig titanium violet cell phone. Now the purpose of my video isn't to discuss all the details of this phone in terms of specs. There are plenty of videos out there that discuss that. I wanna give you the more hands-on everyday use experience with this video. I would like to start off by identifying the exteriors of the phone. You got your S Pen here. Next to the S Pen, you have the bottom firing speaker, your USB-C charger, your SIM card, your microphone, Going around the side, you see you can see that the titanium band continues. Around the back, you have your camera array. The cameras are pretty good. Um, I have used them to take some pictures uh, briefly, and so far, I am pretty impressed with what Samsung has done with this S24 Ultra. Going back around front, of course, you have your selfie camera there. Going around the top, you have your speakerphone for the top. Now this phone is a stereo speaker uh, setup, so when you're using the phone, watching a video, etc., sound will come out from the bottom and the top. Like every other phone, there's not much in this box. You get your device, you get your uh, SIM card uh, popping tool, and a USB-C to USB-C cable. That's it. Um, the phone, good, about, good thing about this phone is this phone does charge on the established fast charging standard that Samsung has established going back to the S22. So those same chargers that were introduced with the S22s can be used to charge this phone at the same speed, 45 watts, uh, high speed USB 2.0 or fast charging 2.0 as Samsung calls it. Power delivery bricks will work on this phone. I'll create another video with accessories that I use with this phone um, to give you a little idea on what all I like to use with this device. As I mentioned, this is the factory unlocked model, which means I can use this phone with any SIM card carrier. And yes, there is a SIM card slot right there. So I can use this model with any SIM card based carrier like AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, Cricket, etc. Vodafone, Orange in the UK, and various other SIM card based carriers. This phone also supports eSIM, so you can utilize it with other carriers with the eSIM. Now the construction. This is a premium handset. The materials are top-notch. The quality, the craftsmanship, the seamless attention to detail, the minor attention to detail, such as this trim across the top, this trim across the sides of the phone, and of course down at the bottom, show that you are buying a phone that has been well-developed, developed by a company that cares about its product's reputation. I'm not sponsored by Samsung, nor was this device given to me for free. I paid for this device with my own money, but I still have to say, the quality is unlike any other. Accenting around the cameras, and on this instance, you get more of a goldish uh, to a silver accenting, depending on how you look at it under the lighting conditions. And the color, this is the titanium purple. But as you can see on camera, it really shows as a maybe a slate gray. Uh, some say it shows more as a black, but this is called a titanium purple color. Starting out with the front of the screen, you have the same 6.8 screen. The screen has changed. This is not the same screen as previous S23 models or S22 models. This screen is a lot brighter, a lot more richer in color, a um, lot darker. Blacks show much better on this screen, more black tone, um, colors pop, they're more vivid. Um, the screen resolution overall is a major improvement over previous generation uh, or previous model phones. The image is sharp, crystal clear, crisp. The true colors are accurate. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell here on camera. Uh, really, this is a screen you have to see in person. 
and then combined with the flat construction of the screen and getting rid of that edge, it makes this phone a great experience to use on a daily basis. Now moving on to the comparison. This is my S23 Ultra in lime green color. I've been using this phone for the better part of the last 14 months continuously as my everyday driver. Looking at the two from the top, they look very similar, very, very similar. Both are premium construction in quality. Uh, Size-wise, they're about the same, but the differences are subtle, but yet very, very distinguishable. As you can see with this phone, you have the edge curve, which was a very nice touch um, to the Samsung lineup. Um, but you know, this phone is nothing to be ashamed about. This is still a great phone. In 2024, if this phone wasn't available, I would still continue using this phone. Now, the reason why I changed or upgraded is I was wanting an upgrade and I wanted to experience the flat screen like the iPhone Pro series, Pro Maxes. Those are premium devices, and when you compare those devices to this Samsung, the S24 Ultra, you will enjoy the S24 Ultra. Here are both of the Ultra devices together. Here on the left is S23 Ultra, and here on the right is the S24. As you can see, with the same background, um, there is a screen difference. If you can look down here in the red here for this app there, the red icon is a little bit sharper and more in depth with a little bit more contrast than the one on the left here. Now it is kind of hard to tell on screen. I hope that it shows on there, but the new screen does have a richer, deeper color profile than the old screen does. The new screen is a higher resolution, higher nit screen than the new screen is, uh, than the old screens, excuse me. And it shows, everyday usage shows that. When setting up my S24 Ultra, I was able to transfer everything using the Samsung Smart Switch app, including my eSIM. However, I did run into some issues while doing so transferring my eSIM from my S23 over to my S24. During setup, you do get an option to select a device to transfer your eSIM or set up your new phone with a new eSIM. That can be some, somewhat challenging to do, but let me show you which setting. You go to your settings, connection manager, SIM card manager, and you can see an option here called add SIM. When you do the add SIM, you have this option here, transfer SIM from another device. When you click on that, you'll get this transfer SIM from another device option. By design, when you bring your old phone close to this phone, it should pop up and allow the transfer to happen. But I wasn't getting that prompt, and I'll show you why. Under connection, as you can see, this is what you're supposed to get. I'm gonna cancel out of that because my SIM card has transferred over already. But when you can't transfer your SIM card over or your eSIM transfer doesn't work, you wanna to go to settings, connection manager, more connection settings, and you wanna to toggle nearby device scanning on. This will allow your current device to scan and pick up beacon signals from your new device to initiate the actual SIM card transfer. All in all, I think the upgrade to the S24 Ultra was a good decision. Um, overall, there are, there are differences in both devices, though both device, devices do look very similar to each other. The subtle differences do make it worth getting the new device. I am a techie, so I do upgrade these devices far more often than most normal people will, but that's just my hobby. So let me know in the comments below, do you think it's worth upgrading to the S24 Ultra based on the specs and all the videos out there? 
let me know what other features and functions you would like me to try out showcase on this new device. Let me know if there's something in particular I can do to showcase and show this device off. Thank you for watching. Bye now.